Good afternoon, everybody. So, last chapter we talked about setting up a default Cinema 4D scene, Cinema 4D scene with um, lights and all these nice shadowing and global illumination. So, this time we're going to talk about how to track your scene and add that nice Cinema 4D stuff into the um, the scenes and the free roams and all that good stuff. So. We're gonna try to move really fast, and hopefully, you, hopefully you guys can pick this up. So we're gonna make a new project, and basically you can call this whatever you want, like free roam scene, or buju, or something. I'm just call mine buju, and click OK, and use the same settings that you used in your la in your uh, main your main uh, Premiere project. So we're gonna use the same HD 720p preset, and can't really see it, but I'm going to click the OK button down there. Alright, so we've got it all set up. We're going to take our clip that we want to track and we're going to import it to Premiere and we're going to double click this little icon to load it up and we're going to set ins and out points. So as you see I'm adjusting the camera and right about here I start. So I'm going to set a in point and then I'm going to go somewhere maybe about here and set an out point. Alright, so Basically, we want to export this uh, this free roam right here, this stuff, to a image sequence. So we're not going to need audio, so we don't need the full thing here. And I'm going to hit plus to zoom in. So we don't need this audio. We just need the picture. So we're going to take the picture and just drag the video down there. So next, we're going to click on this the clip, and we're going to go to effects controls, and we're just going to stretch it out in the motion tab to fill the screen, something like that. Of course, you don't want it like that. You want to just stretch it out like that. And we're going to bring it down because I want more of the sky and less of the floor. So there we go. Um, move it up a little bit and that looks pretty good. So now we're going to go File, Export, Media and you can set the format to Targa, TIFF, whatever. As long as it, it's got to be an um, image sequence. So JPEG works really well for me. So I'm going to select JPEG and set the width to 1280 by 720 because remember this is 1280 by 720 composition or sequence so we want to output that and set the quality to 100% and also we're going to export this as a sequence if you didn't have this checked you would just um, export as one single image so we want the whole sequence so we want the whole uh, video and set the frame rate to 30 frames a second and just to double check that everything looks right you want to select the source and see if it looks just like the output um, if the output was a little different this is not the render that you want. You want it, um, of course, you want it to be matching. So now we're going to set the output to somewhere. I'm just call this like, um, uh, what do we call this? We should call it train or something. Yeah, train. And save and click export. So now we're going to be exporting a bunch of little JPEGs and we're going to take them into Buju to track. And uh, just to get, let you guys know, I am not the best with Buju. I I just uh, try to figure out which way works best for me and made it work. So I'm going to show you guys how I do that. So we're in Buju 4. I've had problems with Buju 5, so just went rolled back to Buju 4. And um, before we begin, I'm going to collapse this because we're not going to be needing it. And anyways, this screws around with my resolution, so we're going to toggle that off. And yeah, the summary could be useful. So first thing we're going to do is import a sequence, and we're going to click on this little button to browse for it. And it's on the desktop, Buju track, um, train. And you see we have all these little JPEGs, and they're each individual frames. So we're just take the first one and open it. Make sure it's from frame 0 to 110 and click OK. So next we're going to click Edit Camera and by default it sets it to the 1280. Yeah, that's right. And the frame rate should be um, 30 frames a second, 29.97. Um, all this looks fine, I guess. And we're going to click OK. So this is our uh, thing we're going to track, and it's pretty easy to track. All you got to do is track features, advanced, and we're going to set the search distance up, sensitivity up, and set the scale larger. So we're going to start the track there. 
So as you can see, we're now tracking um, the points that are closer to the camera move a lot more. So basically, it'll calculate these points in the back. Um, they're, they're not moving as much because they're farther away from the camera. So basically, that, that's, it does all the work for you. All you all, as you can see, it's, um, it's pretty much done, but we're going to create a camera out of this track. So we're going to go to Camera Solve. And we're going to use all the frames that it, we've tracked, and we're going to optimize the smoothness of the camera. And click Start. It's going to do its little magic and create some blue and yellow points. So this is um, not quite sure what the blue and yellow points mean, but um, hopefully someone can tell me what they mean. But anyways, we're going to tweak this track a little bit. So we're going to go to 3D Tasks and Adjust the Solve. So, so we're going to adjust the uh, camera solve one and we're going to optimize the radial distortion so it will might fix up the points so move the points a little bit because it knows that um, this track needs to be fixed so next thing we're gonna do is go to 3d tasks and assess the lens distortion and as you can see it's um, the current track says it's 0 0.04 we're gonna assess that and as you can see it says it's 0 0.04 so not much of a distortion there but anyways we're going to adjust that. And as you see it moved the points a little bit so it's getting our track a little more accurate. And this is pretty much it. This is the track that we want. So we're going to look at what we have in the 3D grid. Um, I'm going to collapse this summary. As you can see this is the uh, floor. I know this is the floor. Um, we take a bit, look at the 2D view. It's the, uh, the floor and if we check, take a look at our 3D grids it's like not even matching because right now this uh, this white box is our floor in Cinema 4D so right so we somehow need to get these points you're even crooked and we need to get them on here so let's go to our 2D view and I'm gonna select three points like this one control select that one and I'm just gonna move around see what else looks good and possibly how about this one this one and that one so basically you want to pick up three points that create a triangle so if you look at our 3D view we have this triangle here so the green points are the points we selected and um, basically we're going to go to the scene geometry and basically you also you want to select points that are like in X and Z so why would we up we don't want to select points that are um, going up we want to adjust these to the ground so um, we're going to go to Scene Geometry and we're going to add those current points to our new selection and that we wanted the XZ plane, so the ZX, and we're going to connect it and apply it. So what do we have now? Take a look. Look at that. All these, our green points are now on the floor. If we select these points and take a look at the floor, look at that. It's almost brilliantly perfect, except for that one. We can even select that one. And if we, again, take a look, look at that. These are all the points on the floor. And here's our wall. we got the background back here and whatever the box is on the side, right? Yeah. Anyways, that's the track. Next, we're going to send this camera to Cinema 4D. So how do we do that? We're going to export the camera. And we're going to set the Buju animation. No, we don't want that. We want a Cinema 4D. And we're going to set the browse somewhere to the desktop to the Buju track and train and we're gonna set this to train or something and make sure it says start frame 0 end frame 110 and click save and that's pretty much it we're gonna go into Cinema 4D and I'm gonna show you guys how to take this camera and uh, set it all up so Cinema 4D and now we're going to go to train and here's our track right here and here's all the images that um, we've exported from Premiere so we're just gonna take the train and import it set the scale to 10 centimeters because we wanna make things not so big actually we could even scale it more but whatever so here's our this is our stuff from uh, from Buju as you can see look at this is what we've got this camera that moves something like that but um we're going to make a few little tweaks, so we're going to go to the render settings and output. As you can see, the width is totally wrong, so we're going to set this to 1280 by 720. Set this to 29.97 frames, and take a look. It's all better now. So, 
Next thing we want to do is add a background. So we're going to click on this light button and add a background. And in the materials, we're going to double click the materials and we're going to add a new luminance material. So take those off and add the luminance and we're going to load the texture. So it was um, train and um, basically just make this a plane so we can see. So that's the uh, background, but it's it's going to be a still image, so we want to make sure it's a video. So we're going to take this train JPEG, go to animation and calculate this so we can see it's 110 frames. Set the mode to... no, set the timing to range, so we want from frame 0 to 110. And that's pretty much it. Take the uh, the material and add it to the background. And here we go. Check this out. Look at that. Those points are now connected. And we are in Cinema 4D and we can start adding 3D objects. But um, we're going to do that in Chapter 8 because I'm going to show you guys how I do my 3D text. So that's this is pretty much it. Um, of course, I'll cover more on why this doesn't align properly. But um, anyways, Stay tuned for the next chapter and uh, keep on subscribing and hope this really helps you guys. Bye.